There's two things I've always wondered. Do witches exist? And if they do, what do they get up to in the middle of the woods on Midsummer's Night? Well, now I know. Because earlier this year, a coven of devotees of Wicca, the old religion, invited us to spend the summer solstice with them on top of the Brecon Beacons. This was the deal. We would be allowed to be the first people ever to film a fertility ritual in honour of the sun god, provided I agreed to play the part of said sun god. As I sat at home learning the lines they'd written for me, I couldn't help but think of those films in which the naive hero is lured to some unfeasibly remote place without realising that there's going to be a human sacrifice and it's him. Wicca, sometimes known as the craft, believes in the duality of the divine and so worships both the goddess and the horned god. First, I met the women. I told some of my friends where I was coming tonight and that I was going to be spending the, the solstice with some Wiccans, and they said, oh, Wiccans, they're witches, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Satan isn't involved in this religion no, in no, any way. No, it's to do, really, with the animalistic side of man, mm. the fertility, which has been knocked out of so many religions, the sexual, the life-giving, the profound. Rather, um, the horns represent a sort of an animalistic nature and um, which is revered because Wicca believes in pleasure, believes in lovemaking, believes in affection and generosity. It's not a sterile religion. It's about having a sense of reverence for the divine life force, which manifests in many different ways. It's kind of tuning in. I mean, if you look around at what's here, life's bursting through. It wants to speak to us. If we're seeing life in abundance, it's a summer solstice you kind of feel very much in touch with yourself, um, perhaps rational or integrated. And it, it's, it gives you that and it, um, again and again. It also gives you the kind of the communal stuff, a sense of belonging with a group of very like-minded people. Even yeah. if you don't necessarily relate to um, a stockbroker on a normal level, which I don't. I can work with a stockbroker when they've got no clothes on and they're dancing around in a wooded circle. Fully clothed in the white robe and black cloak of the sun god, I headed for the woods to meet the men. In caverns deep, the old gods sleep, but the trees still know their lore. And the leaves, they dance to the great god's tune and whisper his name to the wind. And the oak tree dreams of a god with horns and knows no other king. And the oak tree still dreams of a god with horns and knows no other king. Approaches bearing the staff of a king. I am the chosen vessel, the goddess's anointed. By what right do you bear that staff? The, the goddess, goddess is right. Then you are the chosen one. None may bear the kingship that have not proved themselves worthy. To enter this circle, you must pass me by might and by art, and by strength and by valor. Later, I found out that in real life, the green man was a psychologist. Once I'd given him the hiding he'd been asking for, it was time to enter the magic circle. The circle is thought of as a container for the magical energy which is raised within it. Vivian Crowley, the high priestess of the coven, was to play the goddess to my sun king.
What if all the kissing was just a warm-up for the arrival of the naked stockbroker? We who gather in this circle at the zenith of the light, we who live and breathe thy nurturing energy, we ask that the simplicity of our ways be honoured, and that all thoughts of the night be stripped away. Blessed be thee. The pulse quickened as they chanted the name of Hecate and other pagan deities. With blade I cast this circle round, be this circle hallowed. All this business with the sword brought the old sacrifice anxiety flooding back, ensuring that my performance was as tentative and wooden as opening night in the village hall play. I will take your people as my people. I cast off the freedom of the woodland and will wear instead another crown then I shall bind you to the people with the ties of self-sacrifice and we will marry you to the people that you may be theirs in death and in life and I gird to thee the sword of thy people but you shall defend them with thy might and we shall give thee the spear of the people, that you may protect them and uphold the right. And you shall be wrapped in the splendor of the sun, and be unto them their guiding light. Blessed be the king, servant of the people. I mean, long ago in these ancient hills, people worshipped goddesses and gods, and maybe in each different village they called the goddess a different name, they called a god a different name. They didn't think they were worshipping different things. They recognised they were worshipping the divine in many different ways. Now dance ye around the cauldron of courage when the goddess to this consecrated <laughs> 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 I think that the all-pervasive life force, or what everybody calls it, it can be God, it can be the spirit, it can be nature, energy, whatever, um, is the background of every religious um, system because you're actually believing that there is more than what we just see here, mm. that there is more potential and more interaction with the world than merely getting a job, going to work, watching TV. <laughs> Afterwards, there were drinks and nibbles, cider and mead and crisps, but no sign of eye of newt or wing of bat. Still, there had been a broomstick and a cauldron. Until the Witchcraft Act was repealed in 1951, Wiccans were open to prosecution. They don't believe in sin or guilt but in celebrating life now rather than preparing for what happens after death. There are no hard and fast rules, but there is an ethical system often summarized as, if it harms no one, do what you will. Oh, and besides the green man, there were four other psychologists in the coven.
contact details for the religions and beliefs featured in this program and the last series of Desperately Seeking Something can be found on a special Channel 4 poster costing £2. To order, call 0897 188 177 and the £2 will be charged to your phone bill. You might think that all this esoteric palaver only takes place in remote woods and on blasted heaths, but you'd be wrong. The suburbs are seething with it. Join me next week for semi-detached shamanism and some bungalow-based Kabbalistic ritual. And remember, in the suburbs, no one can hear you scream. That's the power of double glazing. <laughs>